And for big data services, the data mining and data utilization, you should ask who is the data subject? Who has a right in the data? And who has a right in big data? I guess data and big data are the two concepts and shouldn't be mixed up. And of course, who has a right to open, share, and utilize these data? Of course, it's a very complicated jurisdictional issue and application of law. Next, please. Oh, okay. So for now, I'm going to talk about four legal areas, respectively. The first one is privacy and personal data. The second one is security. The third one is intellectual property. And the last but not least is a cross-border data flow uh, in the perspective of regional cooperation. For privacy and personal data, uh, this is a, a snapshot of our legal framework. What is the legal basis? These are the law. Uh, it's not a complete list. I, I didn't list the criminal law. So if the data breach can subject to criminal liability. Most basic thing is the tort liability law. China is a civil country, so it's important to recognize what's the fundamental basis of your civil rights. And things 2009, privacy has been recognized formally, legally, as a civil rights in Chinese legal system. This is very important. It means once your data has been breached, you can claim civil remedy. Or the second most important law I must emphasize is, this is very new, it happened at the very end of 2012, almost just five months old. It was enacted by the National People's Congress. This is Chinese highest legislature. So this is a law, even though it is very short and a brief Without public consultation, a few people notice that this is pretty sad. China just published a new data protection law without any publicity. Uh, well, this is very interesting. But it is existing and it's set up a kind of data protection legal framework. Uh, the last one is uh, administrative documents. Uh, it is set up uh, administrative protection for personal data. Next, please. Right. Okay, this is my summary of what is happening in China with respect to protection of personal data. Uh, first of all, personal data has been defined as e-information that may identify a citizen's ID and only involve a citizen's privacy. Interesting, I learned yesterday that uh, identifiability and the privacy are two concepts. That's correct, and also showing our definition. And governments, human service provider, and other entities, they have obligation to protect the personal data if they involve these uh, uh, e-information. And there's a, a couple of um, uh, regulation on collection of personal data. The principle is nothing special. It's about legitimacy, uh, justification, and necessity. What is interesting is consent. Oh, well, now I understand consent can be interpreted from uh, many uh, angles. First of all, is this an uh, opt-in or opt-out system? It means you should consent in advance, or uh, the, the, the service provider can acquire your consent in the process of the services. Oh, that's a big difference. The second one is whether it is informed consent. It means that um, whether the data subject really understand what they agree to share and submit to the services. Oh, this is very, very important. The third one is more interesting. Uh, yesterday, uh, we had a very interesting discussion. Uh, right to be forgotten. <laughs> uh, the third perspective on consent is whether consent has a term of limit. I consent to share my information with you. You can use it for analysis. Is this a term? You can use it for three years, and a fourth year should be deleted. I should be forgotten. Oh, that's interesting. And of course, uh, any entity uh, that's attempt to collect information, uh, that they should identify the purpose, scope, and the method. Of course, uh, no entity is supposed to leak, to destroy, destroy sell, or uh, transfer the personal data uh, in illegal means. And of course, they have technical obligation to protect personal data in their system through the network. And look at the penalty. Uh, this is very interesting. For the Chinese law, it's primarily administrative punishment. So if a website, an uh, internet provider is breaching 
personal data, this website could be shut down. Interesting. Next, please. Right. So these are defects and caveats I um, analyzed. First of all, it's very limited rights for the data subjects. And let's see, if it's primarily administrative punishment, it's limited civil remedy. I think for personal data protection, the number one priority is to identify who is the owner of the data. The data subjects' rights is a fundamental rights, and in many countries being highlighted as a human rights. But in China, this is not so clear, even though it's not a common civil rights. So that's the positive part, um, but uh, we still worry it's not really being highlighted. Now it seems the protection is from the opposite side, so the service provider is not to breach your rights, but do you have a proactive right to prevent the utilization and access and collection? That's a question. That's interesting. Uh, so primarily you can complain and report. And look at there. Request ISP to delete or cease communication. So it seems the right to be forgotten is not new at all. It has been existing in the data protection for a very long time. If you discover your data uh, has been communicated illegally, you can ask to be forgotten uh, or forgiven. <laughs> Limited civil remedy. Uh, as I said, it's primarily administrative punishment. But there is a drafting law on consumer protection. Uh, there is a civil remedy that could be available. Uh, I do believe this law will be enacted uh, sometime in August. And of course, we are now uh, facing to the question from privacy to the forgotten rights. Next, please. Okay, next issue, security. Well, China has many laws, regulations on cybersecurity. It's so complicated, so I'm not going to go through that later on this. What I'm talking about is what is happening right now and like what I'm doing right now. I'm now leading a, a, a drafting panel uh, on behalf of state council, draft a new regulation. Uh, the, the delegates is Ministry of Commerce. It is regulation on internet retailing services. And in this pending regulation, we can see in this very interesting chapter is transactional data. Transactional data in internet retailing. Of course, it involves some traditional information, the seller's information, the consumer's information, the, the banking logistic information. But this is something even more interesting. That's not happening in traditional uh, transactional purpose, that there's some information generated in the transactional process. I submit uh, often through the retailing system, and then it generated uh, a contract there's some new information created in the process, and now the big question is who is really the owner of the generated information. That's pretty new. Uh, what I'm, I want to emphasize is that uh, according to the drafting of briefing, the government is specifically interested in the location of the storage of these critical information. Uh, the, the, the big company like Alibaba is now have a trillion, uh, have a trillion dollars of uh, uh, revenue uh, it involved the economic security now. So the government believe it to move their data center or server out of China. This is really against our national security. And you'll think about the other data center and clouding services. They want to move the data center in China or out of China. They all involve something called transactional data. This is a critical issue on security in cyberspace. Okay, integer poverty. Integer poverty has always been a uh, uh, necessary perspective in digital protection. Um, uh, on one hand, there's a couple of information that cannot be open, cannot be shared because of somebody's property rights uh, well, and the WTO trips agreements. It's non-disclosed commercial information. This is the property of those uh, IPR owners. And there are some know-how, technical information that should not be shared. Of course, from the perspective of open data, we agree with you. These are very useful information. Whether they could be shared, used for the ecosystem, <laughs> well, that's, that's to be considered by the IP people to reform the law. From the other perspective, the, the data could be very important for the enforcement of your property. A few years ago, Google was specially uh, required by the 
copyright industry to provide you tools, Gigabyte's information, the user's information. Google refused to do that. Um, and uh, after the, the order of the court, uh, if they refuse to submit the YouTube uh, subscribers' information, there will be contempt of the court. How to handle that? <laughs> As a result, Google delete all the personal information and make it the big data and hand it over to the copyright industry. So it's been very interesting. The data, the big data, could be very useful for IPI enforcement. And I hope the happy people will look at that. The very last issue, please go down. These are the cross border data flow. Um, and, and here, oh, I, I, I fully agree, uh, Professor Moonrise, a wonderful presentation, uh, especially on the one stop public services. This is also one stop. It's in international trade, it's called single window. Primarily, it means to fulfill all the regulatory requirements, you submit all the information in one stop at a single entry point. And it, if possible, it should be in electronic form. Um, if all the country can link up this one data entry point, of course, international trade will be very efficient. Simple that you don't have to duplicate all your submission on customers, on, on tariff, on, on security, every time to all these countries. Useful. Go down, please. Well, this is what I'm doing right now. UNS CAP is now drafting a regional uh, arrangement or agreement to facilitate the paperless trade. Um, uh, UNS CAP has a resolution in May 2012, and now is the, the, the agreement is being drafted. Uh, there's a lot of discussion, both in ASEAN, in China, Russia, uh, in the framework of UNSCAP. The objective, uh, look at here, is to facilitate the exchange and mutual recognition of the trade data. Oh, John Murray, Professor Murray's uh, presentation is so correct. When we have a discussion with the technical people, they don't believe documents or picture are data. <laughs> so we have a lot of discussion uh, with, between the law and technical people. But this cross-border recognition of the e-data in international trade would be very, very important. Uh, this is really trade facilitation. What is really sad is they refuse to put in services and digital licensing. Oh, this is bad. There's, there's the argument that WTO, oh well, as Professor, as Professor Park presented yesterday, there's no legal framework existing, it's still being negotiated. But anyway, it could be completed. I guess it would be positive to stimulate the regional trade uh, in, in Asia. And finally, there will be an APTFF uh, in September this year in Beijing. Uh, you're welcome to be there. There will be more discussion on this regional agreement. So this is all my presentation. Thank you very much.